Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King! On you, Husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Is your youngster a problem child in the classroom? Maybe it's because our schools themselves are such a problem. Maybe your child is sharing desk and textbook with another child who is also finding it hard to learn under such conditions. Nearly a million new students a year are entering schools that are sorely overcrowded and understaffed. 400,000 new teachers will be needed within the next 10 years. President Eisenhower has pointed the way by calling a special White House conference on education to take place in November. Meanwhile, states and communities are organizing their own conferences to discuss local school problems. Carry the ball for your community. Write for free information on how to hold a community conference. Write Better Schools to West 45th Street, New York 36, New York. Remember, better schools build better communities. This message is brought to you as a public service. Tom Berry knew he had to reach Dawson City at all costs before the thaw set in. His freedom, perhaps even his life, depended upon it. He had left Whitehorse some time before, following the cold and torturous route along the frozen Yukon River. At Selkirk, he had traded his weary dogs for fresh ones and had pushed on in the face of a blizzard that at times made him feel that his efforts would be hopeless. But his fierce determination drove him on toward his goal until alone, utterly weary from cold and hunger and constant travel, he reached an outlying cabin on Beaver Creek, about 30 miles from Florida. Oh, hold on, boys, hold on. Oh. Another mile you dropped in my track. Well, hi there, young fella. Come in. Oh, come thanks. In. Thanks a lot. Hey, you look plumb tuckered out. Take off your park and rest a spell. Hey, let me help you, son. Oh, thanks again, mister. I sure appreciate getting in out of that cold. Uh, my name's Finley, Jake Finley. Oh, yeah. Glad to know you. Mine's Tom Barry. Tom Barry, eh? Well, now, you just make yourself to home and rest a spell while I get you some hot soup. Then, while you eat, we can get better acquainted. Tom Barry left the cabin two hours later after getting food and rest and headed along Beaver Creek toward Dawson City. A short time after he left the cabin, Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police raked his dog sled to a stop in front of Jake's cabin. Oh, King. Oh, you, oh. Come along, King. Hello, Jake. Well, hello. Glad to see you, Sergeant. I see you still got King along with you. I rarely travel without King. Oh, fine dog, all right. Come on in out of the cold. Thanks. Cold. Did you come far, Sergeant? From Whitehorse. Well, there was a young fella here a while ago who come through from Whitehorse. His name Tom Berry? Yes, that's right. Mighty nice young fella, too. Did they do much talking while he was here, Jake? Yes, he was right good company. I hated to see him go. Barry sure has a lot of gumption. He come through from Whitehorse without stopping in spite of the storm. 
seem to be in a hurry to get to Dawson City. Yes, I know. Well, sit down, Sergeant. I'll fix up a bit of food for you. No, thanks, Jake. Jake and I will go on into Dawson. We haven't any time to lose. Well, you seem to be in as much of a hurry as Tom Barry. I am. You see, Barry's the man I'm after. What? You mean the law wants him for something? That's right. Barry's wanted for murder. Come along, King. Oh, oh. By the time Tom Barry had reached Dawson City, the storm had stopped and the clouds began to break. First, Tom disposed of his dog team. Then he went to the cafe. Hi there, Tom. I haven't seen you around lately. You been away? Yeah. Is Laura around? She's back in the dressing room getting ready for her singing act. Thanks. Come in. Why, Tommy, I didn't expect you back so soon. I've been awfully worried, wondering what happened in Whitehorse. Plenty happened, as you probably know. Where's your brother Lou? Tommy, you act so strange. After all, honey, I haven't seen you for over two weeks. I asked you where Lou is. How should I know? This is a fine way for you to act when we're supposed to be in love. Now, look, I... Laura, I want you to tell me the truth. Have you seen Lou here in Dawson lately? Past day or so? You mean he's here in Dawson? You know darn well he is. Where is he? (laughs) Tommy, you're hurting my arm. Right? (laughs) Sorry, Laura, but... Well, I have to find Lou right away. The police are after me. Police after you? Oh, Tommy, what's happened? It was over two weeks ago when you told me Lou had seen the man who killed your father. And had followed him to Whitehorse. I know. You begged me to follow Lou and keep him from killing that man. Lou swore he was going after Jack Watson and get him for shooting Dad. But what happened? Well, I followed Lou. At Whitehorse, I found out Watson had a room at the hotel. I went to his room. The door was partly open. Watson was dead. Oh. Someone passed along the hall as I was coming out. He saw the body lying inside and called the clerk. They accused me of the murder. I got away and headed for Dawson, figuring Lou would come back here after he killed Watson. I'm going to find him and make him clear me. Oh, so now you accuse Lou, is that it? Maybe you did kill Jack Watson. What? Laura, you don't really believe that. I thought you'd help me, seeing that we planned to get married. I don't love you enough to let you put the blame for a murder on my own brother. But he did it. You know he went there for that purpose. You were the one who asked me to stop him and not to say anything to the Mounties. The best thing for you to do is clear out and forget about Lou. Trying to put the blame on him won't help you with the Mounties. So that's the way it is, huh? Yes, that's the way it is. I won't say anything about you being here. The barkeep already knows I came here to see you. Sergeant Preston, that dog of his, went Whitehorse. He'll be sure to trail me here. I can handle Pete, the barkeep. You get away right now and hide out. The fall comes shortly, and then you can escape to the outside. I'm not going to run away and be hunted for something your brother Lou did. They find out that he followed Jack Watson for the sole <laughs> purpose of... <laughs> Don't be a fool. If you tell that story, they won't believe you. But, Laura, you know that's the truth. Lou and I will deny the whole story. But if Watson killed your father like you said, they, they might even let Lou off if he told him the truth. <laughs> you have a lot to learn, Tommy. You'd better get out of here and hide someplace if you think that Mountie Preston is trailing you. Tommy, I have to go now and sing to those customers before they start tearing the place apart. Better get away right now. But, Laura, wait a minute. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. You should have been at the ball game today. I saw three home runs. And guess what? I got one of the home run balls. Fellas and girls, why don't you get a free baseball ticket? It's easy. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Your free ticket is waiting for you right now inside packages of Quaker Pop Wheat, Quaker Pop Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, and Quaker Paco 10, which has two free baseball tickets. Yes, if you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see wonderful major or minor league baseball games free. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Get as many free tickets as you want. No mailing, no waiting. When mom buys breakfast cereal, just be sure she gets the kind with a free baseball ticket inside. That's Quaker Pop wheat and rice and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. So don't miss out another day. 
see the star players wallop those home runs. Now to continue. Later that evening, in Laura's room up over the cafe, she and her brother Lou, who worked in the gaming room of the cafe, were talking. <laughs> the poor dope Tom Berry was all upset because he couldn't find you to get you to confess about Watson. <laughs> he sure fell for our plan, Laura. Imagine him going all the way to Whitehorse just to keep the brother of the girl he loved from being a killer. <laughs> yes. He didn't know you planned for him to get the blame like you did. You know... That story I gave him about Watson having murdered our father was a good one, too. Watson never saw Pop in his life. When I saw him with all that gold, I knew he'd have to figure some way to get it and put the blame on somebody. I didn't think you'd send Barry into the trap. You two seemed to be so thick with each other. I was stringing him along because I knew he'd come in handy somehow. <laughs> no. If the Mounties catch up with him and he tells them that story, they'll think he's lying. Everybody around here thinks you've been laid up sick for the past two weeks. I made sure I wasn't seen in Whitehorse, so nobody will even listen to his story. Oh, we can do a lot with that gold you got from Watson. Yeah. The thaw will be here within a week, and when the first boat leaves for Seattle, we'll be on it. Yeah. And once we're away from here, we... Who's there? Sergeant Preston, Northwest County Police. Uh-oh. We'd better watch our steps. I'll let him in, Laura Cole? Yes, that's right. I want to ask a few questions, Miss Cole. Come in, Sergeant. Thank you. Come along, King. <laughs> this is my brother, Lou. He works at the cafe, too. I see. I'm glad to see you, Sergeant. Thanks, Cole. Oh, quiet, King. Well, that dog doesn't seem to like me very much. So I notice. Miss Cole, I understand a man named Barry, Tom Barry, came here to see you this evening. Oh, yes. Tom just returned from a business trip to Whitehorse, so he told me. He had to leave right away on another trip. Oh. Where was it going, do you know? No, I don't, Sergeant. We, well, we had kind of a spat about it, too. Tommy seemed to be touchy and upset about something, but he wouldn't tell me what it was. I, Sergeant, why are you looking for Tommy? Has he done something? Tom Barry is wanted for murder in Whitehorse. Murder? Oh, that's terrible. But we... We hope to get married someday, Tommy and I. I see. <laughs> Sorry I have to tell you such news, but that's the way it is. Sure you can't give me any idea at all where he might have gone? No, Sergeant. I, I really can't. Please believe me. Why, I wouldn't shield a murderer even though I might I understand, be... Miss Cole. Well, tell me, Sergeant, are you sure it was Barry who killed the man in White Horse? Reasonably sure. The victim's name was Jack Watson. Jack Watson, you say? So that's who it was. You knew Watson? Well, he was here at the cafe a couple of weeks ago. Spent a lot of gold. Last time he was in, he said he was heading for Whitehorse. Had a chance to make the trip with a couple of other prospectors who were gone. I see. Well, I guess Barry trailed them all the way and then waited to get Watson when he left the other two and put up at the hotel. That's about the way it was, all right. Well, I have all the information you can give me. I'll pick up Barry's trail sooner or later. Good night. Good night, Good night. Sergeant. Come along, King. <laughs> Sergeant Preston, with King at his side, went down the main street toward the Northwest Mounted Police Headquarters. As he was about to go in, a man stepped from the shadows. Sergeant Preston? Yes, I'm Sergeant Preston. Oh, I... I've been waiting here for you. I'm... I'm Tom Barry. Tom Barry? I trailed you from Whitehorse. I thought you would. I want to talk to you about what happened, if you listen. You want to give yourself up? Oh, it isn't that. I didn't kill anyone. Watson was dead when I went to his room. Why did you run away? I came here to find someone. Someone I thought would clear me. Why did you go to Watson's room at the hotel? To warn him and to prevent him from being murdered. I see. Who did you think was going to try to kill Watson? Why, I'd rather not tell you that, Sergeant. I want to find him and get him to tell you the whole story. I know he'll clear me. But you won't have a chance to find him now, Barry. I'll have No, him. please, give me a chance. I won't try to get away. I swear I won't. Tell me... Who else besides Laura Cole knew you went on that business trip to Whitehorse? No one. Well, that is only the person I want to find. In other words, if you find that person, you expect he'll confess and clear you? Well, yes. You see, Tom, I... Tom, that doesn't make sense. Watson was murdered because he carried a small fortune in gold. And you say the man who killed him will give up that gold and confess just to clear you. 
He'd have to be a mighty close friend of yours to do a thing like that. But Watson wasn't killed for his gold at all, Sergeant. That's just it. You see, Watson was a murderer himself. That killing was for revenge. I've known Watson for many years. He never killed anyone. Who told you he did? Why, I can't tell you that now. Oh, never mind. Keep your secret, Tom. I have my own idea about it anyway. I want you to stay in my cabin with King while I try to get proof that you didn't kill Jack Watson. And I'll know where to find you if I need you in a hurry. Leaving the dog with Tom, the sergeant went back to the cafe for another talk with Laura Cole. Luckily, he found her alone at one of the tables. Miss Cole, I brought you some news. Oh, Sergeant Preston. Won't you sit down? Thanks. You, uh... You spoke of bringing news. Yes, I thought you'd be interested to know that I found Tom Berry. You mean Tom didn't leave Dawson? No. In fact, I didn't have to search for him. He came to me. The story is rather a strange one. He's a fool if he thinks anyone would believe that story. He's crazy. What story? What? Why, the one he told you. That is, trying to put the blame on, on someone else. When I talked to you before, Miss Cole, you pretended not to know what happened. Why did you try to let me think you didn't know about Watson's murder? Sergeant, I, I was stalling for time, that's all, to, to help Tom. But since he went to you and told that story... Tom told me practically nothing except that he's not guilty. He's foolishly covering up for someone. I thought perhaps you might know who it is. How should I know? Sergeant, my advice is to disregard whatever he tells you and go by the facts you have against him. I'll think over what you advise, Miss Cole. I left Tom waiting at my cabin. He has something with him that will definitely prove who the killer is. You, you mean Tom Barry found something in Watson's hotel room that was left by... by the one he says got there first and killed Watson? I've said too much already, so believe what you like. I'm due at headquarters for a meeting with the inspector. I'll see you again sometime, Miss Cole. Good night. Good night. After Sergeant Preston left the cafe, Laura sent a message to her brother by the barkeep. And then she went up to her room. A short time later, Lou came in. Yeah. What's up, Laura? Lou, that Mountie. He was here again to talk to me. Oh, what about it? He found Tom Barry. Oh, that was quick work on the part of the money. Barry in jail? That's just it. He isn't in jail. That Sergeant Preston isn't convinced Tom killed Watson. Tom must have told the money the story we cooked up. No, with... that fool Barry is still keeping his mouth shut for my sake. He thinks you're going to clear him. <laughs> Yeah, that's your odd one. I know. But the main reason I sent for you, Lou, is because of something that Mountie said without meaning to. Yeah, what? He said Tom was waiting at his cabin. And that he had something that would definitely prove who the real killer is. But now, Sergeant Preston has a meeting on at headquarters. He just left to go there. Meantime, Tom Barry is waiting at Preston's cabin out on the edge of town. This is your chance to go out and see him, Lou. Yeah, yeah, so it is. Tell him you're going to help him and that we want to talk to him. You mean you want me to bring him back here? Don't be a fool. Once you get him to leave that cabin of Preston's, I don't care what you do. If something should happen so that Barry doesn't show up and can't be found, that Mountie will think he was guilty after all and skipped out because he was scared. Leave it to me, Laura. We'll have nothing to worry about after tonight. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, why aren't you fellas and girls out at the ballpark these days, watching those home runs walloped into the grandstands, eating peanuts, popcorn, and hot dogs? Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. All over the country, kids 12 years or younger are seeing major or minor league games free. All you do is bring mom or dad or another paying adult. And you get your free baseball ticket immediately inside packages of Quaker Pop wheat, Quaker Pop rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. You'll find two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. So be guest of your favorite team at the ballpark. Rush to the store with your mom and grab free baseball ticket packages of Quaker Pop wheat or rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or... Quaker Paco 10, which has two free tickets. The more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals you get, the more free baseball tickets you get. Now to continue. 
In Sergeant Preston's cabin, Tom Berry sat waiting for the sergeant to return. King lay in his favorite place near the fire. Suddenly, Tom was startled by a knock at the door. Uh, hello, Tom. I found out you were here and came right over. Lou, I'm glad to see you. Come here, come here. Quiet, King. This is a friend. How did you know I was waiting here? Well, that Mounty Preston told Laura. Oh, I knew you wouldn't let me take the blame for what happened to Watson. Sergeant Preston said he's known him for a long time and that he never killed anyone. But naturally, Watson would keep quiet about what he did to your father. Well, yeah, that's right. Now, look, get your things on and come on over to the cafe to talk to Laura and me. We'll get things straightened out tonight. Oh, but I promised to wait here for the Mounty. Well, he's over at the cafe now. We'll tell him the whole story. Well, all right. I'm sorry you didn't tell him about Jack Watson before, Lou. You shouldn't have taken the law into your own hands like that. Well, he deserved what he got. Come on, let's get going. All right. I'll get my pocket. I was afraid Laura had changed toward me. She acted so strange when I talked to her. Laura was worried about both of us. She didn't know just what to do. Ah, the poor girl. I guess she was under a strain at that. She sure was. <laughs> now, you have to stay here, King, and wait for Sergeant Preston. Lie down, fella. Hurry up, son. All right. I'm ready. Stay here, King boy. We'll take the shortcut along the ravine, Tom. The sooner we get there, the better. All right. Let's go. The two men walked along the narrow trail that bordered a deep ravine on the edge of town. Gosh, I feel better already. You know, Lou, I'm glad you came for me like you did. I was sure you would. That's why I didn't tell about you following Watson the White Horse. Then Preston has no idea about it? Oh, no. I did tell him I didn't kill Watson, but I wouldn't tell him anything else for Laura's sake. Tom, what was it you found in that hotel room? Something I dropped? Well, what do you mean? Stop stalling. Preston told Laura you had something at the cabin with you that would prove who killed Watson. But that's not so. I don't know what he could have meant by that. Come on, let's get moving. Oh, uh, wait. I... Oh, hey, what's that for, Lou? Why do you pull a gun on me? You trust and fool. Laura doesn't care a rap about you. <laughs> you came in handy, that's all. I can't believe that until we talk to her. You're not going to talk to her now or any other time. I thought we were... You thought her. I was cool enough to clear you at my own expense, huh? <laughs> Preston was right. Jack Watson never killed anybody. And you did follow and kill him for his gold. Hmm. Now you're waking up. You won't have a chance of getting away with it. Sergeant Preston will find Preston you. and everyone else would think you've got cold feet and cleared out when they can't find you. What? What do you mean? I mean I'm putting a bullet in you and tossing you in the ravine. When the thaw comes, the water down there will carry your body away for good. No. No, you can't do that. I haven't told about you. And you won't get the chance. This is it, Barry. King! King! Oh! As Sergeant Preston shouted, Luke Cole turned. King leaped forward like a streak of lightning. Oh, oh no! He grabbed Lou's gun arm before he could pull the trigger. Oh, oh, oh take him off. Uh, um, take him off. Oh, 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 Sergeant Preston, you and King got here just in time. Lou was going to kill me. I know, Tom. I was waiting near the cabin when he went there. Laura, Laura said you were going to a meeting. That's what she thought. I told her Tom had something at the cabin that would prove you killed Jack Watson. I was talking about King. Oh, you, you, you can't prove that. I don't know anything about Jack Watson's murder. Oh? Well, I'll get the truth before long. Right now, I'm taking you in for the attempted murder of Tom Berry. After we leave you at headquarters, Tom and I have a visit to make at the cafe. All right, let's get going. Later that evening, Laura Coe was waiting in her room for Lou to return. Finally, she heard steps in the hallway outside and looked up expectantly as the door opened. Hello, Laura. You! Didn't Lou go to the cabin and... Yes, he went there, Miss Coe. Come in, King. The mounting and the dog. You seem surprised to see us. Why did you come here with Tom Barry? Where's my brother? Miss Cole, your brother Lou is at headquarters right now. At headquarters? Then you've arrested him? That's right, and I'm taking you there, too, for playing a part in the murder and robbery. You can't prove any such thing. It's just Tom Barry's word against mine. No, you're wrong. You'll have two against you, Tom Barry what? and your brother. You mean Lou talked? He's a fool. I should have known he'd mess things up. Anyway, he planned everything. Getting Tom into it was Lou's own idea. And Lou killed Watson alone. 
I was still here in Dawson singing every night. You were an accessory before the fact, and you planned with Lou to do away with Barry. I'm taking you to headquarters right now. Oh, no, you're not. As Laura drew a gun from the table oh, drawer, King away. sprang instantly, knocking her to the floor and knocking the gun from her hand. Get him away. Please, get him away. Down, King. Down, fella. Get up, Miss Cole. You're not hurt. Tom. Tom, don't let him take me to prison. It was all Lou's fault. Please, Tom, for my sake, do something. For your sake, I made a fool of myself, Laura. I'm through being the fool now, though. You helped Lou plan Watson's murder, and you even helped him plan mine. No. Thank heaven, Sergeant Preston will see to it that you don't make a fool out of any other man. Oh, Tom, how can you talk that way to me? <laughs> even King recognizes crocodile tears when he sees them. That no good dog. King is a wonderful dog. Saved my life and kept you from shooting Sergeant Preston. I hate that dog as much as I hate you, Tom Barry. You'll have a long time to think about King and Tom Barry in prison, Miss Cole. But I'm sure both of them will soon forget you. This case is closed. Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. The warm weather and long daylight hours mean more fun out of doors, especially for the younger members of the family. But sometimes it's not possible to be outside, or it's important to relax and sit quietly for a little while. Then is the time to tune to Mutual. Every weekday afternoon at 5 o'clock, there are programs of imaginative entertainment that bring all of the adventure and excitement of the wide open spaces. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon, member of the famed Northwest Mounted Police, braves the dangers of a wild and lawless territory in the days when gold was king. With his faithful dog, Yukon King, Sergeant Preston is a challenging example of courage and daring. And following Sergeant Preston every day, Monday through Friday, is Bobby Benson. Every weekday afternoon at 5 o'clock, the doors open wide on a whole world of adventure with Sergeant Preston of the Yukon and Bobby Benson, both on mutual over most of these stations. When the trail ended at a cabin on a riverboat, Sergeant Preston found the three crooks he'd been following. But he needed more proof, and they knew it, as they calmly stood facing him. You got nothing on this, Mountie, and you know it. <laughs> what have you found, King? Hey, that dog, he found the loot. That's the evidence I need. But you'll never use it, Redcoat. You and that muddle die right now. The moment is a tense one for Sergeant Preston, who alone, except for Yukon King, faces three desperate crooks. How will he escape what seems to be certain death? Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. The delicious cereals shot from guns. <laughs> By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle. Produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. And directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. <laughs> <laughs>